Welcome, we haven't done this in a while, but uh, welcome in to our SiouxCityJournal.com Playbook Pundits live stream here on SiouxCityJournal.com. If you don't know who we are by now, that's okay. We'll reintroduce ourselves. We don't remember either. We, uh, <laughs> I'm sports editor Zach James. He's assistant sports editor Shane Lance. And uh, we're glad to be back with you for a, live, for a rare live stream on a Friday night. We'll try to do these on a more regular basis uh, once we're all back from the holidays. But we would want to just come online and talk about a pretty big football game coming up on Saturday, which is between Morningside and Grandview, and that'll be at 5 o'clock on Saturday in Durham, North Carolina. Um, a pretty big game. We've been covering it all mm -hmm. week, and, and this is what it's all about here the for national the national Champ. championship. This is it. Yeah, yeah this is it. This, I mean, think back. I mean, we started, obviously, with high school and college, but... That very first day in mid-August when we did the big photo shoot with all mm -hmm. of the local teams, that was the beginning of football season. December, what, tomorrow's the 18th? Yes. That's the end of football season. That is a long, <laughs> that's a lot of football. It but it, it's kind of sad. I mean, football is a great sport to cover, but no matter what, after tomorrow, it's done. But yep. it's going to be fun either way because they got a couple of really good teams. Well, going like ahead. I brought up with online editor Jerry McNett as well, um, there are the bandits coming up in the spring, but mm -hmm. but your point is well taken that that this is the end of the football Football's season. Football's a year-round sport, it, it seems. It, it, <laughs> uh, it, it is starting to become a year-round sport. So we'll see what the USFL coming up in the spring. But uh, but one last game, Morningside and Greenview, a lot to go over uh, that we've had in print throughout the weekend online. If you've missed it, go to SiouxCityJournal.com and check out all of our stories from through, throughout the week. We've kind of been hitting it pretty hard in the last week and a half, and, and it's pretty fitting, too, that the Mustangs were in the national championship for the third time in fourth years, third time in four years, and the, for the first time in the NAI football national championship history, this is the first time two teams from the same state, any of the 50 states, are in the national championship game, and, and it's pretty fitting that's between the Mustangs and the Vikings. Yeah, I mean, having two Iowa teams playing in North Carolina for a national title is a strange circumstance, but it's it's really fun just because I think it speaks to the quality of football around here. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not just those two teams. I mean, you've got a team like Northwestern last year that played in the national title mm -hmm. game. You've got Dort that's always in the mix. So you've got a, a whole lot of really good football teams, and we've, we've tried done our best to cover all of them yes. um, to a fair extent this year. But it does feel that these are these are kind of the two teams that just battled really, really hard all year, and they have very much earned their spot. And, and like I'll talk about in my story um, coming up in Saturday's paper, and, and Zach Martin talked about this earlier this week in the Mason City Club Gazette, that there were some really good high school football players in Iowa, and for them to stay home – at Northwestern, at Greenview, like you said, Northwestern, Dort, even Briar Cliff, mm -hmm. to an extent. I think they're trying to make their kind of footprint here in the state of Iowa as well. It just showcases what we have in the state of Iowa, and that just only helps with recruiting down the road that high school kids, high school sophomores and juniors, and maybe even freshmen, can see those these local kids playing in these national championship games, and maybe they'll tell, say to themselves, hey, I want a piece of that action, and, and mm -hmm. that they'll stay home and, and, and play for these programs. And you see uh, players like uh, the Grandview quarterback, Johnny Sullivan, for example. Perfect quarterback name, he, honestly, he's, Johnny Sullivan. Yes, he started his uh, high school. He ended his high school career in Clinton. Then he went to U and I for a couple years and saw that he wasn't going to get the opportunity he thought he was going to get under Mark Farley. So he transferred to Des Moines, where a lot of his high school buddies already were in Des Moines, and he just found his footing there in Grandview. And uh, uh, Iowa quarterback like that being on the natural landscape will be pretty cool too. But Moinsett has a pretty damn good quarterback as, as well, and mm -hmm. Joe Dolinchek, who yeah. received NAIA Natural Player of the Year on Thursday. Uh, we both have talked to Joey. Uh, in the last week and a half and throughout the whole season for that matter. I think that award meant a lot to him. Yeah, I, I called him yesterday and we, we talked for a couple minutes. He mentioned he found out about the award from a friend of his. They were, if you've probably been keeping up on social media, they're down in Durham, North Carolina, getting the tour of Durham, Durham Bowls Athletic Park. They've gone to several big-time things Came down in there. Came into a stadium, yep. home of Duke basketball. Yeah, they're seeing it all down there. And he mentioned... 
they pulled up to the baseball stadium. He gets a text from his friend that just says, congrats. And he texted back, for what? Because he had no idea that he'd won <laughs> NAIA Player of the Year. And then his friend just sent him a screenshot of the Twitter post announcing it. And that, that's when he tweeted out announcing it too. And everybody sending him all these congratulations. And I, I really liked when I asked him too about Tyson Coima of Northwestern winning it last mm. year. How much did that motivate Joe Dolinchek to win that? And it sounds like it definitely was a factor. I mean, he he's a com big time competitor. Mm -hmm. He wants to win. Yes. And seeing a rival quarterback on a rival team win something like that, that's really got to boost yep. you. And he, yeah, he's leading the league and we're leading the nation in a lot of categories yeah. right now. Yeah, and he's had a stellar season, uh, a lot of production. Uh, passing touchdowns, I think he has 46 passing TDs on the season, if memory so. serves right. I think his yardage is over 4,000, yep. if I remember correctly. So, yeah, like you said, leading the nation a lot of Yards categories. per game, I think he's at like 336 and a half or something. Yep. So, that's, those are some that's, impressive stats. That's some good production. When and you have good receivers around you, like Reed Driggins, Myron Austin Johnson, yep. a bunch of other guys that, that uh, escape my memory, um, just that. That's just what Moines has done the last couple of years, just being really powerful offensively, especially in the air. And the most stunning stat that I've seen about Joe Dolanchek, he has not taken a single sack. Yeah, that's all unbelievable. Year long. That's that, a huge credit to the offensive that line. That is the offensive line. They keep you from having a single sack all year. You can live with no fear. I mean, you can, he can just hang back there and just get it to Reed Jurgens Meyer, Austin Johnson, his receivers. He can hand it off to Anthony Sims, who can just run free when he is healthy. I mean, that's just if you do that for your quarterback, they can just do pretty much anything. Yeah. Yes. Speak of Sims, Anthony Sims. You did another story in today's mm -hmm. paper on how he's coming back for tomorrow night's game. It seems like he's healthy and he's practiced all week. How big is that for the Mustangs to have their number one running back back? I think it's pretty big. I mean, obviously, they were pretty thin at that position the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks because you had Sims go down. Um, you had Ryan Cole, who was a former St. Anzer kid that I covered back at the Globe Gazette. He went down a couple weeks ago. Um, and you had uh, Strecker, who stepped in. I'm forgetting Strecker's first name. Matt, Matt Strecker. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. Strecker stepped in and put up some decent numbers. I think had 65 rushing yards yeah. a couple weeks ago. Um, but having your your stud running back that's just gotten you to to the big stage. I mean, you gotta you gotta go with your big horse yeah. at that point. Yeah, I mean, you got to. He he's over a thousand yards rushing. He's just he's spectacular when he's healthy. So. Um, yeah, it was definitely a big blow when he went down. They managed. They won the next couple games, and now that he's got, I think, three weeks to heal and kind of get that thing healthy, mm -hmm. I, I think he's going to yeah. have – I don't know if he's going to have his greatest game because who knows, maybe there's some after effects still there. Yeah. But I think he's going to come in motivated, and he's going to – he might put up some decent numbers. I think he'll put up some decent numbers. I don't think he'll have an astronomically big game. I think he needs, like, five touchdowns to break the school record mm -hmm. for career touchdowns. I don't think he'll get – Quite to there, but I think he do score. He does score a couple of times and gets over the century mark in yards. And I think I would call that a pretty productive bet if he got to that point. Yeah, and that's a big thing that Grandview is probably going to do is try and keep him uh, from being able to break off big yards. They have a very good rush defense. I think they're seventh in the nation in uh, total rushing defense. I think they've allowed in total defense. I think they are allowing only like 11 points a game mm -hmm. on average. So it's going to be tough to run the ball, which means that Dolinchek is going to have to rely on some of his receivers. Yep. Um, but I guess at that point, the Grandview defense doesn't want to kind of open it up for Dolinchek right. and for he to do it. So they might be able to get a few, a little bit of space in, in the rushing lanes too. Morningside's defense is pretty potent too. Yeah, I and think they're one spot ahead of Grandview. Yeah, I think they are one spot ahead of Grandview, and fittingly. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what do you think a couple big keys for Morningside's defense will be? Oh, I think you mentioned Johnny Sullivan. I mean, he, he's a pretty good quarterback, too, he as is. we mentioned. So if you can get pressure on him, just have your defensive line. And Morningside has a really good defensive mm -hmm. line. So if they just they can do what they do, just kind of put pressure. Um, and they've got they got a good, pretty good secondary, too. I mean, if they're, they're airing it out, just try and get some picks, get some turnovers. Uh, at this point, it, it really does seem to come down to the turnover battle yeah, I in think a lot so of too. games. And, and Coach Ryan has talked a lot about that throughout the season, but... I think it's a pretty big key coming up for tomorrow night's game. Who can take care of the ball? And and if you can take care of the ball pretty hand, pretty securely, 
have a pretty good shot to win. Yeah, and that was going into the Northwestern game a couple weeks ago. They were talking about how the turnover battle was going to be big there. Yeah. Um, and it proved to be. I mean, there were some there were some big turnovers that uh, kind of swung things Morningside's way. So if they they keep doing that, just put pressure on the quarterback, kind of just get in that backfield and cause havoc. I think that a couple big plays could really swing this. You think Morningside wins? You know, I I think they do. I think they have a good shot at it, and I think with Sims back and Dolinchek, ever all of their playmakers are pretty healthy right now, other than Ryan Cole, the backup running back. Um, if they have all of their weapons in there, I think they I think it's going to be close, but I think Morningside pulls it out. I'll say it like this: I think whoever has the ball last has the best shot to win, and I know that's kind of a cop out answer, but when you have two evenly matched teams as we have between Morningside and Greenview, I think that's what it literally is going to come, what it's going to come down to. Who has the ball last with less than three minutes to go, and whoever has it last, I think, will end up winning. And I think this ends up being a shootout, too. We've, mm -hmm. We said that against Northwestern, we and we were we wrong. We were very wrong. <laughs> we were very wrong, but I think, I think this will be a shootout. Like, we're experts. You can trust us. We're not always right, and you, you're seeing behind the curtain here, but we, we are predicting another shootout this time. Uh, but I guess even with two good defenses that's a it's a risky thing yeah, to, to risky, bet on yeah. but uh, I the offenses are so good I think it's gonna be I, think so too. I, I agree with you I think it's gonna be the last team to have the ball and I in my heart I feel like it's gonna be morning side they're gonna be able to pull it out hopefully so and that'll be a uh, for that'll be a fitting for a cool welcome home party on Sunday when they mm -hmm. return back from North Carolina and I was at the one a couple of years ago and that was a fun time when they rode in on a fire truck. Nice. I think Dolinchek was holding a flag in the back of the fire truck, grinning ear to ear. Somebody else had the trophy, held it up big, and, and uh, yeah, that that welcome home was a good welcome home on Sunday a couple years ago, and hopefully uh, that'll ring true coming up uh, by the end of this weekend as well. Yeah, and if there if people are out and about at watch parties yes. too, we're going to have Jared McNett, our online editor. He's going to be that... I know he's going to be at Bob Rose. He might yep. go to uh, Miles Inn. Anywhere that people are watching this game, look for a big, yeah. tall guy with a notepad. <laughs> That's going to be Jared. Yeah. And see if you want to talk to him. But he's we'll, we'll a Chiefs be, fan, so he'll he is be a Chiefs in a fan. good mood. <laughs> so, yeah, just if you want to talk to him and kind of get your thoughts about the game and the, the atmosphere, just, uh, yeah, if you want to be heard, talk to him. Yeah, and to your point, too, there's a lot of watch parties around town. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's one at Pea's Pizza. I think the Don's and South Sioux is having one. Uh, the wheelhouse, I believe, is having a watch party. If, if, if there was a gathering place in Sioux City, there was probably the game will probably be on. So, and do you know if it's on any local stations or that's just I this don't live stream? So I think it's just CSPN three. I, I ESPN3. wish I wish KCAU would pick it up. Um, I I think it's a rule that if you're affiliated with the network, like if say if CBS Sports Network. It was carrying the game. They're carrying the JUCO National Championship mm -hmm. tonight that Iowa Western is in, by the way. Like, if it's on CBS Sports Network tonight, I think k Meg should be allowed to pick that game up if they yeah, were allowed to. Sure but no, nice. uh, it's on ESPN3. I believe k S is also carrying it on the radio side of things. But uh, we'll, all, of course, have coverage for you late Saturday night as well. I'll be well. live tweeting it. You'll if you're be on live Twitter. tweeting it. He'll be covering the game remotely uh, here in Sioux City. Because we are, we are obviously not in Durham. We are not. In we Durham. did not manage to find We're a blank in wall Durham. in North Carolina. No, no, we did not. This is but our blank wall. This is our blank wall. I'll have coverage of the inaugural Arena Invitational coming up on Saturday, which I'm excited for. Seven games uh, of high school and college games. Iowa Lakes and DMAC are the two. College uh, teams coming up to play at the Tyson Event Center. Uh, the tournament start, tips off at 10 a.m. inside the Tyson between uh, Emmitsburg and Class 2A number two ranked Esperville Lincoln Central. Uh, the Mitchers are playing really well right now, so uh, that'll be a good game to tip it off. The West girls are playing. SBL boys and North boys are also playing in the tournament. So a good combination of, of local and Siouxland flavor and defending Class 2A boys champion Weston Christian. Mm -hmm. It's the penultimate game against Omaha West Side on Saturday night. So a pretty good menu of basketball. If you're still in town and want to check out some basketball, uh, the Tyson Event Center is a good place to do that. And if you just got home from watching Briar Cliff take on Ottawa, I don't know what happened in that game. I know it was tied with about six minutes to go. So some pretty good basketball this weekend in the area. So make sure to check that out. And USD also home Monday and Wednesday night. The men are in a way against Oral Roberts in Kansas City. 
So uh, some pretty good basketball for you. If you're, if you're ready to have that basketball flavor, uh, finally, uh, we have that for, there's some good uh, options for you in the Sioux Land and wrestling-wise. There's a couple mm -hmm. of tournaments at Long Line's Family Center. Yep. Battle Waterloo. Healing's competing in that right now. Uh, so, so some good wrestling and basketball options for you in the area if you're so inclined to do so. You Winter is here. Winter is here as we sort of saw on Tuesday, Wednesday. It's kind mm -hmm. of... Last, oh God, <laughs> last week, a snowstorm a couple of days ago, just basically an in, inland hurricane. So Yeah. yeah by the way, if you got affected by the derecho, by the tornadoes, we're thinking about you. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully you can get back on the right side of things if you did get some damage. And uh, I know you'll bounce back uh, better and stronger than ever uh, before the uh, storms hit on Wednesday. Any any closing thoughts from you before we get out of here for the holidays? No, I'm just excited for uh, tomorrow night's game. I'm, I'm going back to Seattle on Tuesday for family Christmas, so I will not be here next week. I don't know what you're going to I won't are. be here next week either. I'm, I'm jet out of here uh, Thursday afternoon once my girlfriend gets off of work. And, uh, nice. So we'll be, we'll be off for a week or two, but a week we'll, or be, two. we'll, we'll be, be back, back in January. Yeah, we'll point. be back in January. Uh, we'll talk basketball. We'll talk wrestling. Uh, maybe even a little bit of swimming here and there because it's because the metro swimming team is slated to be pretty good maybe in some hockey with the metros mm -hmm. and musketeers so uh oh yeah that's the one the musketeers thing we should talk about akira schmidt yeah schmidt with uh yeah last, talk about year's, schmidt. last year's goaltender with the <laughs> musketeers is now a member of the new jersey devils of the nhl we wrote a little bit about that. Um, just really good accomplishment. Really impressive. That's awesome. Yeah, it took That's him awesome. seven months to go from the USHL <laughs> to the NHL. <laughs> to is... Tier 1 junior hockey all the way to the highest level of hockey in that's, seven months. That's, that's real awesome. impressive. Yeah, so congrats to Akira Schmid, the Musketeers. Uh, that's just a, it's a great story. So we're uh, we're happy yep, for him. We're happy and, for uh, him. Yeah, yeah, we'll be covering absolutely. the Musketeers throughout the season. And, and, well. and there have been a few other former Muskies who have been called up to the NHL. Alex Steves. Alex Steves. I think there was one recent one by your team uh, the other night, by the Kraken, got a former Mus Musketeer the other night. I, yeah, I can't remember his name. Um, but, but, yeah, good to see former Musketeers doing well in the National Hockey League and also in the ECHL and AHL, and also in the collegiate ranks, too. It's good to see the Musketeer, Musketeer alums do well wherever they are. They're so all yeah. over the so place. So that's a good call. Mm -hmm. Way to bring that up. Good job. Thank you, Zach. Good job. <laughs> Very well. All right. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Uh, we're thankful to have you alongside, along for the ride with us. It's a, it's a wild ride as always. It doesn't seem like there's any downtime. Never. <laughs> um, so we're thankful for you that you're, you keep up with us. And if you have any story ideas, any Athlete of the Week nominations, uh, feel free to send them our way at SCJ Sports at SueCityJournal.com. And you can tweet at us as well. He's at Shane M. Lance. I'm at Zachary W. James. You can follow us and drop us a line there as well. For Shane, for Assistant Visuals Editor Jesse Brothers, I'm Zach James. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you whenever, pretty much next month, next year. Thanks for watching.